All righty. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Delaware Department of Transportation and Council on Transportation with coordination with Will Mapco and DART to present the Newcastle County draft fiscal year 23 to fiscal year 28 capital transportation plan. We are very happy to have you here. Uh, we have uh, apologies for doing this virtually. Um, we had thought that we were going to be able to be in person, but with recent events of um, that you've probably heard in the news and such, we wanted to make this as safe as possible. So we are hosting all three presentations virtually. Next slide, please. Okay, so just some housekeeping things for public comment. Good afternoon and welcome. Here are some quick instructions on how we will handle questions and public comment during today's CTP public meeting. If you would like to type your question in the Zoom session, please use, use the question and answer function. If you have joined via the Zoom session via PC or other device. You can also raise your hand to ask a question uh, and that that will be done at the end of the presentation. To raise your hand, look at the raise hand button on the menu at the bottom of your screen. If you are dialed in by phone only, you can also press star nine to raise your hand. Please keep in mind, we won't know your name, so we'll identify you by your phone number when calling on you. You can also press star six to unmute yourself. For public comment, you are allowed three minutes and your topic should be transportation related as per the workshop agenda. Lastly, you can view closed captioning by clicking the associated button at the bottom of your screen. We are recording this session and we'll post it to our social media platforms shortly. Okay, we just as an FYI, during and after the session that goes from September 15th today to November 15th. We have a survey on the associated websites. You could also send an email and you can call. So there are many ways to provide public comment. Next slide, please. Okay, so for today's presenters, the introductions and the Grand Master is myself. My name is Pam Steinbach and I'm the Director of Planning for DelDot. We also have Heather Dunigan, a Principal Planner with Will Matko. That's the Newcastle County's Metropolitan Planning Organization. There will also be DART updates provided by Catherine Smith, Planning Manager at DART for State, as well as John Callen, Planner at DART for State. And then rounding out the end, I will be going over the new projects as part of the draft FY23 to 28 CTP. And then Mark Lutz, our Deputy Director of Design for DelDot will be highlighting some notable project updates that are either in the, the design phase or in the construction phase. And then at the end of the presentation public comment will be 
So has it it. Slide, please. Okay, so I will turn it over to Heather to go over some information from Will Matko. Thank you, Welcome. Pam. You're welcome. So I'm Heather Dunnigan, and I'm joined tonight by our executive director, Tega Segea, as well as other members of WilMapCo's staff. Uh, on behalf of the Wilmington Area Planning Council, I'd really like to thank you for your participation tonight. Uh, WilMapCo is the regional transportation planning agency for Cecil County, Maryland and Newcastle County, Delaware. Metropolitan planning organizations like WilMapCo are federally required for urban areas with a population greater than 50,000 or more, and uh, MPOs bring together the community and local county and state agencies to coordinate on planning our transportation future and decide how federal transportation funds should be spent. Uh, WMAPCO is a council of nine made up of Newcastle County and Cecil County, municipal representatives from both counties, the City of Wilmington, Delaware Department of Transportation, Dart First State, Maryland Department of Transportation, and an appointee by the Delaware governor, which is currently the Office of State Planning. Next slide. As an MPO, there are a few things that we're required to do as part of our planning process. Every four years, we work with the community to develop an updated regional transportation plan that looks out at least 20 years. This plan includes both a vision and goals for the future and specific transportation projects that we anticipate. The RTP is based on evolving trends in transportation, changes in demographics, and new technologies. The Unified Planning Work Program is updated annually and includes both regional analysis and plans, as well as local community and corridor planning to help us work towards achieving our regional goals. It contains region-wide projects that look at how our transportation system is performing, what the environmental impacts of it are, and where projects are needed. Our local plans really allow us to work closely with the community to learn what your issues are and how we can improve them. The congestion management system is updated annually and is one example of our region-wide analysis. We look at real-world transportation data to figure out where the worst traffic spots are and recommend ways to address them. All these plans generate projects which become part of the regional plan. The transportation improvement program is where the plans get implemented. Our tip shows what projects we expect to be designed or constructed during the next four years, descriptions and timings of the project, and how much they cost. For a project to receive federal funds, it needs to be part of the RTP and TIP. The WMAPCO TIP then becomes part of the DELDOT CTP, which we'll be talking about later tonight. We have a few requirements for projects. First, they must help us achieve our regional air quality goals. Projects must also reflect the available money, what we can afford. We work both with Maryland and Delaware to develop tra transportation forecasts on available funding, so the projects are not just a wish list. Finally, new projects must include projects to address the maintenance of our existing infrastructure, operating costs, and address improvements to roads, walking, bicycling, transit, freight, and technology. Safety and infrastructure preservation projects are our highest priority. Other new projects are drawn from community and regional plans based on our prioritization process. This process looks at factors like air quality, crashes, congestion, transit use, public health, pedestrian needs and demographics, freight bottlenecks, and economic development to quantitatively assess potential projects. Next slide. So it's critical that we hear from you as we plan so we can best address your needs. To learn ways to get involved, please visit our website at www.wilmapco.org. There you can sign up for our newsletters and follow us on social media. You'll be able to keep track of regional planning opportunities as well as local plans. Getting involved early is the best way to shape the ideas and eventually get funded and built. So thanks again for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you tonight. Thank you. Excellent. Heather, thank you so much. So now we're gonna turn it over to Catherine Smith for her, for the uh, first part of, of the DART updates. 
Thank you, Pam. Good afternoon and welcome to Delaware Transit Corporation's portion of the virtual public workshop for the statewide capital transportation projects fiscal years 2023 through 2028. My name is Katherine Smith and I'm the planning manager with DART. Next slide, please. For the statewide projects, every 12 years, DART retires and replaces our older buses with new buses that operate in fixed route service. For Newcastle County in fiscal year 2024, eight 40 foot coaches will be purchased. In fiscal year 2026, 15 40 foot coaches will be purchased. Fiscal year 2027, 13 40 foot coaches will be purchased. All of these buses will be powered by diesel engines. For Kent County in fiscal year 2023, six propane powered 25 foot cutaway buses would replace six existing 30 foot diesel buses. For Sussex County in fiscal year 2023, 20 30 foot transit buses would replace the older diesel buses. Next slide, please. Also for Sussex County, two additional 30 foot buses would be purchased for the expansion of the fixed route transit fleet. Paratransit vehicle replacements, the older paratransit vehicles would be replaced with new vehicles statewide in all of the counties. Under our federal 5310 program, the older vehicles would be replaced with new buses statewide. Next slide, please. This, is, this slide depicts an example of what a 25 foot cutaway bus is. Next slide, please. DORT has purchased and operates 16 electric buses. We have received our fourth Federal Transit Administration grant for approximately $3.5 million to purchase additional six additional electric buses for Newcastle County fixed route services. As part of this grant, electric charges to support the operation of the electric buses would also be acquired. Two of these charges would be placed in route at key locations, such as the Wilmington Transit Center, and three charges would be installed at the bus garages. When these electric buses are placed into our service, DART will have a fleet of 26 buses statewide, which represents 10% of our current fleet. Next slide, please. This slide shows an example of our electric bus at the Lewis Transit Center. Also assisting me today is DART planner, John Cowan. I will now turn the presentation over to John, who will describe the capital programs for Newcastle County. Thank you, Kathy. Good afternoon. My name is John Cowman. I'm a planner for DART First State. I will now describe the Wilmington Transit Corridor's improvement project. This project covers the four key corridors in the downtown Wilmington Central Business District, Orange Street and King Street from 4th Street to 10th Street and 8th and 9th Streets from Adams Street to Church Street. Some dark bus stop locations may be shifted to allow for amenity improvements that would benefit our transit patrons. Next slide, please. The project goals are to create bump outs at each bus stop that would allow for improved bus access and more pedestrian space, along with reducing dwell time for riders to board and leave buses. Each location would receive real-time bus arrival signage to inform passengers when the next bus is due. Finally, each location would receive new bus stop shelters to protect riders from the weather and wider walkways for ADA accessibility. Construction expected to begin in spring 2022 and be complete before the end of December 2022. Next slide, please. Del Dot and Dart are developing plans for a transit center located adjacent to the Christiana Mall 
near the intersection of Road A and Center Boulevard. This transit center, designated as the Newcastle County Transit Center, would replace the present Christiana Mall parking lot facility located on the Ring Road adjacent to Nordstrom's. The proposed facility would meet the following objectives. Construct a larger facility to accommodate the needs of pedestrians, buses, and automobiles. Offer improved amenities for transit riders and be ADA compliant. The parking ride would be designed for 100 to 200 vehicles. At this time, the exact location and size of the proposed facility has not been finalized. Next slide, please. Darn has opened up discussions with Delaware Park to replace the present Fair Play Station parking lot and bus loop sited on their property. A new multi-level facility, similar to the Wilmington Transit Center, would improve our customer experience for train riders who park and ride, and for our customers who use our fixed route bus network. The new Fair Play Transportation Center would accommodate 495 parking spaces within a new parking garage structure. The redesign would allow easier bus access to and from the facility. Bus platforms would be in an enclosed area located adjacent to the stairs and elevators leading to the train platform. The train platform would be improved. Next slide, please. Construction is underway for the Claymont Regional Transportation Center that would replace the present Claymont Station facility. The new site is located a half mile north of the present station site. The new train station would be ADA compliant, including high level platforms for easier loading and unloading of train riders and would offer 808 free, free parking spaces. This multimodal facility is designed for DART buses to connect with SEPTA trains, along with SEPTA's bus route 113, which provides service to several Delaware County, Pennsylvania communities. Improved passenger facilities for bus riders are planned. Next slide, please. I will now turn the presentation over to Pam Steinbach and Mark Lutz of Delta. Great, John, John and Kathy, thank you so much. Okay, so this part of the presentation, I will be going over the capital transportation program as well as the introduction of our new project. Advance the slide, please. Okay, so. This is some general information on where you can find a whole host of information regarding the CTP or Capital Transportation Program. And I will get into a bit a, a very innovative and helpful ARC GIS website that we have to, to help navigate. Next slide, please. Okay, so just as an FYI for people that don't know, every two years, the Department of Transportation develops a six-year capital transportation program, or what's otherwise known as a CTP, that identifies anticipated capital investments. This program is developed in cooperation with MPOs, and or counties. The program provides information on various DELDOT capital and maintenance programs on the estimated cost expenditures for the project phasing of a capital project anticipated in each specific fiscal year. So all of those words basically mean is that the CTP is an outline or a playbook for all of the projects that DELDOT works on. And they can be a co combination of specific projects like the 95 and 896 project, or it can be a set of programs. So traffic safety or the bridge program. Right now, we are, we are in the September 2021, so the COT, or what's otherwise known as the Council on Transportation, they had reviewed our draft CTP 
they recommended it for comment last month. So this month we are doing three meetings, one for each of the counties. And then once we gain all of the public comment and input, we will, Del Dot will present that information back to the Council on Transportation. And then early next year, the council votes to adopt the CTP. It goes to the approval of the governor um, and that process gets formalized. Next slide, please. Okay, so just a, a bit of information, our draft budget for fiscal year 23 to 28 is just over $4 billion. New Castle is coming in at just over two with Kent at 0.71 billion and Sussex at 1.3 billion. So that's a total number of projects that are either planned or currently in design or currently in the construction phase. And just as a FYI, today we have the new Castle meeting, meeting. Kent is on the 23rd and Sussex is rounding out the month at the 29th. And if you do go to this website, you can register for the Zoom meetings, or uh, I'm sorry, not register, but you can be linked in to attending all of those if you like, they are open to the entire public. Next slide, please. Megan, I'm not sure if 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 it's uh <laughs> I don't see the advance of the slide. Hold on for just one sec, everyone. See, we all knew we were gonna have to have some sort of technical glitch. <laughs> I think we're going to re Sorry, had some, some technical difficulties there. Let me yep. pull that back up. No worries. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Megan. So the new project that we have for the draft CTP is the City of Wilmington Port Area Truck Parking. The, this site is located off of 495 in the vicinity of Hay Road. Go to the next slide, please. So we, uh, so this project is set to provide dedicated truck parking and area to support the expanding port activities. So right now, there is no specific parking area for any of the tractor trailers. And the concern is, 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 is that if the trucks, and they do arrive early, they are not allowed to enter the port outside of their specific time frame. So parking on the side of the roads and, and that is obviously a safety concern. So this project is go going to help alleviate that. This is the ARC GIS website that has been developed by Bruce Allen. Thank you, Bruce. It highlights all of the new CTP 
projects that are being drafted. Um, and it's a very good tool that is available to the public. So Megan, if you could click on the first one, the port area parking facility. Yeah. So it zooms it in just like the aerial I had showed you. And then if you click on the pink magenta line, it brings up the description and the name. But most importantly, if you if you click there to submit a comment, it comes up with this amazing comment form that gives some information to us that is very valuable in what is important to you as the public. It's, it's just a few questions. It's uh, a lot of it is um, just a click kind of thing. And we can, it's, it's a very easy way for us to populate and provide metrics to the Council on Transportation and our legislators on if a project is uh, supported or not supported. Megan, if you can just scroll down just a smidge. Thank you. So as, as we had said, it's just, you know, you can put as little or as much information. We always hope that, they, that you put more information in, but it's just an easy peasy way to, to electronically submit that information. And it's, you don't have to call or print out a form and send it in. So we do have, so as just an FYI, this recording will be made um, and posted on our CTP website and on our various social media platforms. So it, it will be available for you to utilize from September 15th to November 15th. Thank you, Megan. You can go back to the, please. slide. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Mark Lutz, our Deputy Director of Design for the Department of Transportation to go over some notable project updates. Mark? Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Pam. Uh, so as Pam said, I'm going to cover uh, some major projects that are in various levels of uh, construction and design completion in Newcastle County uh, and four projects in particular. The um, earlier in the presentation, you heard John cover some of our major projects focused on transit, uh, transit improvements, uh, but all of our major projects follow a, a complete streets philosophy and include facilities for transit, cyclists, pedestrians, motor vehicles, and freight. Uh, so before I start to get into these four projects, I do want to point out uh, yet another website. We're pointing you to a lot of websites tonight uh, because we do uh, have a lot of information online. And so the, uh, the DelDot.gov slash projects, we call that our project portal. And that includes information on, on hundreds of DelDot projects in various levels of planning, design, construction and projects that have been completed recently. Uh, there's just a wealth of information there. We spend a lot of effort trying to keep that website very up to date on all of our projects. If you go to that, that website, you can search for a project by name. You can search for it by what stage of um, the, the stage of the project. And you can go into a map and look for a project on the map and then click on it and find out all the latest and greatest information. So uh, so encourage you to, because again, I'm only gonna be able to cover a very few projects, some of the biggest ones that we have going on uh, in Newcastle County right now, but we have a, we have a lot going on. Uh, we've, we've even in, in, um, improved that website. Last year, we uh, incorporated our paving projects into that website. And this year, 
we added all of our uh, standalone traffic signal projects. So a lot, lot on that website um, that may be of interest to those of you that uh, are interested in transportation in Delaware. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna start with the 141 I-95 to J Drive project. So just wanna say at the outset, I've seen the memes, we know it's been in construction for a long time. Uh, the interchange itself has been in construction since 2016. And before that we had work going on in the area as well. So uh, the interchange, it's a, it's a large interchange, it's complex, it's very heavy traffic volume. So it's a very difficult project. We've had three major construction contracts going on out there. And the good news is we're on the home stretch for this interchange. So uh, the current construction project that's, that's active right now, uh, the goal of this project is to improve safety, capacity, and operations. Uh, at the, when the, uh, as part of the project, we're gonna have three through lanes in each direction on 141. Uh, so that's gonna have a significant uh, congestion improvement or reduction in congestion. Uh, we're reconstructing the bridges over I-95, which were in desperate need of, of uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction. Uh, we're reconstructing and or reconfiguring all the ramps at the interchange. And uh, we're also improving the merge from I-295 as that merges onto southbound I-95. So uh, improving that condition there as well. So as I said, this project is on the home stretch. We hope to be in the final configuration on I-95 uh, within a month or so in October. And for the whole project, we should be in the final configuration by the end of the calendar year. Uh, there will likely be some minor work going on into early 2022, such as final paving and uh, other small items. But again, uh, we're, we're almost there. By the end of the year, we should be in the final configuration. And uh, after, at long last, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, in, in uh, a, a completed project at, at this interchange. Next slide, please. So another big project uh, in the Wilmington area is our I-95 reconstruction project, otherwise known as Restore the Corridor. So this project is uh, reconstructing bridges and pavement from on I-95 from roughly from the Southern 495 split all the way up to US 202. Uh, this is a, a the, the main point of this project is that just this, this uh, it's an asset management project. The, the, the bridges, the viaduct, the pavement was all in very aging condition. And we really, we needed to do a major rehabilitation uh, to, uh, to, to keep this, this corridor open to traffic. So uh, in addition to the, the rehabilitation part of the project, there are several safety upgrades that are being implemented as part of this project. We, uh, we modified and improved the Jackson Street ramps to southbound uh, 95. Uh, the barrier walls are bring, being brought up to current standards, and the, the roadway lighting is all being improved and brought up to current standards. So, uh, so this is a very large project, very impactive to traffic, which we are very aware of. Uh, what you're seeing uh, on the screen here is the, is the current configuration of, of this project, where the orange part is what where normally northbound traffic would be. That's closed to traffic right now. So that orange area is the part that's in construction. And all of the traffic is shifted onto the southbound lanes. Uh, so we call that contraflow configuration where um, two lanes northbound in this section near the Blue Rock Stadium, we have two lanes northbound and two lanes southbound. As we get up farther into the city section, it's down to one lane in each direction. So the, uh, work, the project is currently on schedule. Uh, if you are... If you're familiar with this project and the, the various, uh, a lot of public outreach we did before the project and, and during the project, uh, we've uh, committed to a two years of, two years or less of major traffic restrictions. So that started in February of this year and uh, we're we are on track to uh, meet or exceed that goal of two years or less. So, uh, Right now we're in what's called phase 1B. We hope to move to phase two uh, later this fall. So next slide, please. 
So phase two, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll open up the northbound lanes. And here's a, this, this slide shows a graphic of, at least in front of the Blue Rock Stadium there, we'll have two lanes northbound on the northbound lanes. And during this phase, 2A, we'll have a split of traffic southbound, uh, as you can see on the screen. <clears throat> Uh, as at the southern end of the project, it's all all the traffic will be on the northbound lanes, as as well as uh, farther north into the city. But the the main um, point is that the number of lanes on 95 will be the same. Uh, during this phase, we'll have all of the northbound ramps open, and we'll have some of the southbound ramps closed. Uh, but I'm not going to be getting into all those details uh, in this presentation. Uh, needless to say, either through the project portal that I talked about or, earlier uh, or at www.restorethecorridor.com is much more information on what ramps are open, which ones are closed, what the detours are, and what the next stage of construction is, uh, et cetera. So the, um, I will say with the schedule, I, I do want to put a caveat on, on our schedule, really on any of our projects once we get into construction, we can always run into unexpected things that will delay us, whether it's extreme weather or unexpected conditions of our infrastructure. Uh, on a rehabilitation project, you're, you're particularly at risk at that. Uh, we do our best to try to make sure we understand everything that's gonna be needed to be done during construction, but often we find things that, that we didn't know about. So, uh, but right now we're, we're happy with where we are on the project schedule. And again, hope, hopefully switching to this phase later this fall. One other item I do want to point out on this project, uh, given the constrained conditions and the very heavy traffic volumes, uh, we've, we've had a fair number of crashes through our work zone and we are uh, really seeing excessively high speeding through our work zone. And given how constrained it is, there's really no way for police enforcement to do, uh, to do enforcement on speed enforcement. So, we are going to be, we did get legislative approval and we will be implemented, implementing later this fall automated speed enforcement through this corridor. So that'll be the first uh, implementation of automated speed enforcement in Delaware. It's a pilot program that is only for this work zone at this time. Uh, but uh, I wanted to give you the heads up that that will be uh, later this fall. The exact schedule is still being figured out. We'll be uh, implementing that automated speed enforcement. Next slide, please. All right, so let's get off the interstate system and move uh, to the southern part of the county. This is in Middletown. This is the uh, Route 299 project. So this project will address uh, the significant development growth in and around the, the Middletown area. <clears throat> the project's gonna widen a Route 299 to two through lanes in each direction uh, from Route 1 to Cleaver Farm Road and then from Cleaver Farm Road to Catherine Street, it'll, it'll be one lane in each direction with a, with a two-way center turn lane. Uh, we'll also have a 10-foot wide path on the south side of the road and a five-foot wide sidewalk on the north side of the road. Uh, we also have improvements uh, that, are, that are part of this project on Brick Mill Road, including improved lanes, sidewalks, and notably a proposed roundabout at the access to the hospital and the, uh, the shopping center there to the west. So this project is, uh, is just, well, it's early, earlier in the construction. Uh, utility relocations have been going on since last summer and the main construction project uh, began earlier this summer. And this project is expected to be completed in the fall of 2023. Next slide, please. Okay, so now I have this project is the last one I'm gonna go over, and this is the I-95-896 interchange project. This project is still in design. Uh, the, the traffic congestion on I-95 at the 896 interchange is really one of the last remaining regular congestion points on Delaware's interstate system. Uh, in addition, we have a major crash issue on southbound 95 as it approaches the 896 ramps, the way that the ramps are currently configured during peak hours, particularly the afternoon peak, traffic regularly backs up onto southbound I-95. And uh, we have a very high number of crashes uh, due to that backup. 
So uh, that's that's all. So the the current design that's out there, it's called a cloverleaf interchange. That design worked fine in the '60s when it was first conceived, and and the country put in a lot of cloverleafs in the '60s and '70s. And now, as traffic volumes have increased, they're really not appropriate in most most places anymore. So uh, that is what we're going to be correcting with this project. The uh, the proposed project is shown on the screen has multiple flyover ramps that are gonna uh, much better accommodate the heaviest traffic movements uh, at, through the interchange. And uh, in addition to the, the vehicular traffic improvements with those, with those flyover ramps, we're gonna have a multi-use path uh, along the west side of the interchange uh, from north of the interchange to south, which is really gonna fill a critical gap in our bicycle and pedestrian network along 896 in the Newark to Glasgow area. So the, the, the good news on this project is we've gotten some early action work done already. Uh, so in 2019, we implemented some dynamic message signs to better alert motorists when traffic is stopped on, or on 95 southbound approaching the ramp like I talked about earlier. Uh, last year, we implemented some lane improvement, lane configuration improvements uh, that allowed the heavy northbound 896 to 95 movement to more freely enter I-95. And, uh, and a similar lane configuration change that better serves southbound 95 going towards Newark. So those are done, um, and those have been working very well. And uh, we have one more early action project where we're gonna change the lane configuration again on 95 southbound and implement some improved overhead signs. That should be done in by mid 2022. The main project uh, is expected to start construction by the end of 2022 and should be completed in 2025. So with that, uh, we can go to the next slide and I can hand it back over to Pam. Thank you very much, Mark. All right, so we are at our public comment part of the presentation. So we would love to hear from you if you have any comments, any questions, not only what has been presented today, but if you have a specific comment or question about a project or, um, any type of funding thing, any DART question, anything from Will Mapco. Um, we are taking questions um, as we had said, and thank you so much for a few raised hands. So let me just get in here first, Let's see here. Okay, so Megan, um, the two raised hands, can you unmute the first one if they, they want to speak right now? Hello? Hello? Is your name Anne? Uh, yes, me, Anne. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you uh, and thank everyone for providing this forum for um, comments and concerns of uh, people regarding um, WOMAPCO and DELDOT uh, and uh, TIP projects, et cetera. Um, I'm Ann Chisholm. I'm a member of the Old County Road community. And at a recent well-attended town hall meeting with DELDOT and several state and local representatives, Today's meeting was identified by them as an important one for residents to express their substantial concerns relative to Old County Road. With that in mind, we have consolidated the comments about Old County that have been raised on Facebook next door, at community meetings and at town halls over the last year or so, and would ask that you develop a tip project to revisit DelDot's unfinished work there and what was good about it, uh, starting with a safety study with the understanding that Old County may very well meet all of your prioritization criteria if you take a good look at the big picture on and around this, this particular road. 
Basically, three framing issues seem to have emerged in community discussions of Old County over time. First, the basic lack of attention to the road after DelDOT's 2005 corridor assessment study was put on the shelf for 16 years without any follow-up, in spite of the fact that this study described Old County as, quote, substandard and, quote, inefficient and recommended $6 million of capital improvements that were never meaningfully undertaken. Second, since then, as a result, existing problems have increased and new ones have emerged. And third, four major approved development projects with increasing existing problem, well, will increase existing problems further and bring still more to Old County Road in relatively short order. And for future reference, these uh, major development projects are Pine View on Fraser French Town, uh, the uh, senior living facility on Old County proper, Glasgow Commons at People's Plaza, which is, I think, a Will Mapco project and also Southfields of Elkton, just over the line in Maryland on 213. Furthermore, a wide range of at least 16 diverse problems have resulted from the conditions created by these general issues. The first five on the list were identified in the 2005 study, although there are more issues from that study and more problems that people have mentioned in these very public fora. We're just trying to present the uh, most frequent ones that we've seen. Uh, first, stopping site distances. Second, curves and visibility issues. Third, visibility over the hill just past the intersection for the fire station. Uh, fourth, driveway access point congestion. Fifth, drainage and stormwater runoff, which is a major, major environmental issue in the area. Uh, also, we're looking for a breakdown and interpretation of all crash data for Old County Road updated to the present, including formally suppressed Homeland Security data and the recent tragic fatality on the road. We understand that even without such data, Old County Road has two and a half times more accidents than average. And uh, I wanna be sure I'm not 100%, I'm quoting that faithfully. Uh, Mark Lutz gave us that information at the town hall that I was uh, discussed at the outset. Speeding through, through traffic with respect to folks trying to avoid Route 40 and the significant influx that will occur due to increased traffic load from the three major Delaware developments in the area that I already mentioned, plus the one just over the line in Maryland. Turn lanes in specific desired location. Large traffic, uh, large vehicle traffic, uh, especially construction vehicles that are already starting to use the road and a plan to enforce the signage regarding construction vehicles. This is new signage uh, that are not strictly local. Also, the congestion and additional safety risks that will result from a two-way entrance on Old County Road that will service all employees, all visitors, all residents, and all commercial supply vehicles for 196,000 square foot senior living facility regularly and on a daily basis, less than 100 feet from Puffer Drive, which is the two-way entrance to Marabou Meadows. And this doesn't even take into consideration two residential driveways that are within 200 feet, as well as uh, sort of a block-ish away, the entrance and exit to the Adams Run uh, uh, community as well. We're also looking for some analysis of what it will mean to have increased emergency vehicles traveling specific to the, specifically to the senior living facility, uh, especially on Old County between the facility and the Aetna fire station which is gonna to have to take a right on the road and then a left across both lanes of traffic into the facility. Uh, and then finally, uh, residents would like to have a clear discussion and sense um, uh, of what's gonna happen between the bar drive and the Glasgow intersection in terms of the piecemeal road changes that are already in the works as the result of impending development, as opposed to any changes based on the 2005 study or from any kind of community input. So for example, there's turn lanes and road widening at specific locations that were like completely unforeseen in the 2005 study. And I will close now. Uh, thank you for the time. Accordingly, we ask that Will Mapco include Old County Road as one of its transportation projects because instead of having the forward thinking road improvements identified as necessary by Del Dot's 2005 corridor assessment study, Local residents are instead experiencing increasing problems that remain unaddressed in addition to new problems that are accumulating unabated while changes 
that often exacerbate these problems are imposed upon them piecemeal without a sense of a larger whole every time a new development project is in the works. We would also ask that in doing so, Will MAPCO will help everyone to avoid the trap of inadvertently reducing all of these very diverse issues, and there are more than I even mentioned, described above, to a simple, well, widening the road will make some people unhappy discussion. Indeed, this project would meet all of your prioritization criteria, we think. You get to determine that, of course. And our hope would be that Del Dot and Will MAPCO would investigate and provide creative solutions for the many diverse issues at play on Old County Road in a way that would help community members to get in front of these issues as they were 16 years ago when 80 some, I think it was 86, participated in the 2005 study that then seemingly evaporated, as opposed to declining to solve these problems because of either or thinking at the outset with the result that increasingly troublesome, uncreative solutions are adapted ad hoc, piecemeal, and narrowly for developers each time a development project occurs and without any input from the community or a sense of the big picture at that. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to say all of that um, and for your kind of dedication to service for all of these issues uh, uh, for, for the county uh, and Delaware overall. I know this is not an easy job. I know there's not a lot of money, uh, but uh, the community would really ask you to consider our thinking along these lines. Thank you so much, Anne. We really appreciate your comment. Well, thank, thank you. you. And I'll, I'll just quickly add, Anne, that we'll be happy to work with DelDOT to evaluate what project uh, might be added to the RTP. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a technical prioritization process. Yes. And that guides us in selecting projects for both the TIP and the RTP. And so for a project to be considered, it would need to be part of our long range plan, which we'll be starting the next update of in about six months. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're willing to do anything uh, that we can to help the process. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I think the next person is Bill Dunn, I believe. Bill, can you hear us? Hello, you there? Yes, yes, hi. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm Bill Dunn. I uh, uh, am vice president of a countywide organization that's been around since 1962 called the Civic League for Newcastle County. And I also sit on the Wilmapco PAC uh, group. And I've done that for the past four or five years um, and been involved in land development, transportation issues in Newcastle County, dating back 20 years. A um, couple, uh, I appreciate you guys' presentation, um, but uh, many of them prompted questions that uh, maybe some can be addressed now, others later. <clears throat> Um, the first thing, uh, DART had reviewed uh, their uh, bus plans as far as purchases, and maybe she can chime in later. What kind of surprised me, if you look at the three counties in the uh, state of Delaware, Newcastle County <clears throat> has far more transportation issues, far more bad ozone days, far more problems with air quality, yet the proposed uh, purchase of new buses, none of them are more efficient type propane electric type purchases uh, that's being proposed right now. Uh, I appreciate interest in doing that down around the beach area and Kent County. If, I think you have one or two smaller ones there. But Newcastle County is in desperate need of transportation improvements to build in efficiency and less environmental problems. And two, to utilize the, the state of the art as far as air quality buses um, in that process. Um, the second thing they got hit on was the uh, truck parking for the Port of Wilmington. Uh, presently, as you're probably aware, Will Mapco's uh, working on a Route 9 corridor plan or, or issues regarding uh, in and out of the port. Um, I'm kind of interested 
it, it appears you're ready to move forward with something in that area. And, and I would like to think that those two interests in the same area are not exclusive to each other and Del Dot's gonna do what they do and they'll look at Will Mapco's stuff later. Before that project should start, they should be melded and a plan develop at that point. Um, as to your uh, active projects right now, the four that got highlighted, 141, I see it is uh, almost complete and it was a long time coming, but it does look very, very good. And I, I can envision how it's gonna play out and it looks like a great project that uh, is finally reaching its end. Uh, regarding the City of Wilmington uh, I-95 improvement plan, uh, if I remember correctly, it was less than 10 years ago that there was a complete resurfacing done on the Brainy One Bridge, and only a, a year or two ago was it discovered that there were major uh, cracks within the, the superstructure or the structure of the bridge itself, and, and it it really didn't bode well in my mind as to how well Del Dot handled that project. All right, I wanna know if we're guaranteed that these improvements that are gonna be made, one, completely evaluating all the engineering quality of the bridge work and stuff through the city, uh, including the ones that, uh, for the blocks that fly over um, uh, I-95. And secondly, that we're not going to face the next two years of uh, um, transportation problems through the city, uh, only to turn around four or five years later and face another problem uh, in that situation. Okay, Bill. Uh, Thank well, you. Oh, I, oh uh, I, I'm sorry. But before you ask your next question, if you don't mind, just, just so we can make sure that we're properly answering them. Um, Mark, is there, is, is there any way you can just highlight briefly on our bridge inspection process and, and that we have looked at the, the, the bridge? Sure. I mean, all of our bridges get inspected at least every other year, and any bridges that have concerns get inspected every year. Uh, so we have, uh, we're, we're constantly looking at our bridges. Um, I'm not familiar with the uh, overlay project that Bill brought up from 10 years ago. I can check with staff on that. But I mean, I can say more generally, there's there's a, a wide range of rehabilitation and reconstruction projects. So it very well may be that we did an overlay 10 years ago, which was really designed to last 10 years. And now we're doing more of a, um, a more significant rehabilitation project. Uh, so again, I'm not I'm not familiar with that um, project from 10 years ago. I can look into that. Uh, I don't know if there was issues with it uh, or if it, again, if it was really designed to last 10 years and, and it did its job. Uh, we've been planning for this job since about 2015. Um, again, and it includes the Brandywine River Bridge and includes the uh, depressed section through the city. And of course the viaduct out there in front of the Blue Rock Stadium. Uh, so um, yeah. Um. Okay, uh, maybe I'm, well, I doubt it. <laughs> From what I understand, it was discovered that there were major uh, issues with the support girders for the Brainy One Bridge that uh, were discovered in the past couple of years. So uh, nonetheless, let's move on. Uh, uh, Bill, Rick. I'm sorry. Um, just being on the, on the, I'm not sure how many questions you have Just a couple more and then final oh, comments. Great. Um, route 299. Um, you know, I'm not down in the Middletown area frequently, but once, twice a year. Um, it, it seems that the expansion that was done a few years back, and you can be more specific as to when that might have been, um, and it, it was clearly recognized that there was going to be dramatic land development down in southern Newcastle County. It was projected back 20 years ago when it first, well, probably 30 years ago, first started 20 years ago when I first getting involved, there were 
uh, at this time, there's somewhere between nine and 11,000 already defined parcels for land development and homes. Um, and I'm kind of wondering, with the projection that was there, when the last improvements were made to 299, um, why was it the design not set up to anticipate what was a foregone conclusion that, that there was going to be major residential development down in that area and you were going to need a major highway to get across uh, from Odessa to Middletown and then connect into the pl Plan 301. Um, the last one is the 896 thing. Uh, it, this is just, this is my personal one. Uh, northbound 896 to northbound I-95. Hopefully there's going to be major improvements in ha how that, ac that access ramp is designed because it's a pretty abrupt turn and um, I imagine that kind of came into play in the design phase, but nonetheless. Uh, moving forward, um, right now there's consideration for the Churchman's Road uh, Improvement Plan for Newcastle County, which Will Mapco and the county are driving. Um, one of the things is a proposal to uh, connect Churchman's Road through Delaware Park to Kirkwood Highway to alleviate loads on Limestone Road Route 7 and Harmony Road to the, to the west. Um, the governor and the General Assembly have reopened up um, the industrial land development down uh, from Wilmington down Newcastle through Dobbinsville. Uh, how much consideration is being done, one, to make broader improvements, the length of the existing Churchman's Road, and two, to address the traffic demand, truck traffic demands that will come with any in industrial development down in that area. This is something the General Assembly in 2017 opened up 17 or 13 sites in Newcastle County that are proposed for land development and or industrial redevelopment. It's a known, it, again, this is similar to Southern Newcastle County. You know it's coming. Yeah, there, there's plans for it. The General Assembly wants to see it. They want to see job growth. They want to see all the things necessary. Creating a, an access way out towards the river, coming off of Route 1 somewhere along the line to draw traffic away from residential areas is something clearly that needs to begin the planning phase now for the industrial or commercial development that might come in those sites south of Newcastle and alleviate an overload of traffic in that area. 270, if you've got a Churchman's Road that's one lane in each direction south of 95, you've got uh, 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 273 that would bring you down to the bottom of uh, uh, Newcastle where you're gonna have to utilize that roadway if there is industrial and commercial development down, down along the river. There are, there are many things that are saying, this has to be planned on and implement or, or prepared for on the front end, rather than waiting till you're five, 10, 15 years behind in ro road improvements that you know where development's coming. Uh, Thank you, Bill. Thank you, I, I appreciate yep. that comment. I'm, I'm not sure if um, anybody from Well Mathco has any, any input in that or, or, or if, um, but I, I mean, I know we, we are still working on the Tursman's Road, I don't know if it has extended that far down, um, but, but we very much appreciate your comment. Now, I would just, again, uh, encourage Bill to uh, follow our website. We do have a page on there for the Churchman's Crossing Plan and, uh, we do have a public workshop, I believe, that will be in late October. So feel Perfect. free to take part in that and share your ideas. Heather, I have been, and the one that's not getting any consideration is a further improvement to the south end of uh, Churchman's Road. But I very much appreciate the, the proposal for the um, connection road to Kirkwood Highway through Delaware Park. Great. 
Great, thank you for your feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so um, Mark, I, I have you as raising your hand. I, I don't have your last name. So if you, if you could just say your first and last name and ask your question or provide your comment, please. Yes, uh, Mark Figs, F-I-G-G-S. Hi. Hello, um, Bill, I do agree with the, um, I was a little disappointed when I heard the amount of uh, diesel buses that were purchased. I would like to see more uh, electronic um, buses be more available. I also had a question if um, in future planning, is there going to be um, spaces for EVs, pedestrian EV or um, privately owned EVs to be charged at uh, public stations. I, I recently tried to buy an EV and I rent an apartment and it doesn't make sense, unfortunately. So it is a lot cheaper for maintenance and for operation to have an EV. Um, but I also jumped on this meeting today because I wanted to hear about the Newark train station and I might've missed it. I don't think I heard anything about the Newark train station. I know that there was um, an issue with some pipes in the past that I didn't, is that project still on track? What's going on with that? Sure, um, so, so first off, Mark, the, the EV station, so we, we have just recently uh, developed a new division within Del Dot, um, the division of resiliency and sustainability. Um, so one of the main missions of that division is to provide more EV stations across the state. So there is going to be more to, to come on that. Right. Um, but, but thank you so much for your comment. And then, um, Mark, I'm not sure if you wanted to just chime in on the Newark train station. So the Newark train station is still uh, still cranking along. Parts of it are in design, and as you know, the you know the building is there. The parking lot has been redone, so it's still uh, it's parts of it in construction. Parts of it are still in design. There are some significant issues uh, in our coordination with Amtrak that we need to sort out, and uh, so that's there's there's issues we're trying to sort out with Amtrak that will help us figure out how to get to the finish line on that project. All right, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mark. Um, so before I get to David Carter, Carter, I just wanted to just note that, that we did have a question in the question and answer from Ashton Jencott. I'm sorry if I messed up that, that name, uh, but the, question was, is there a spot on the Dell Dot website where I can suggest cameras at an intersection? So we had, uh, if, if you do want to send that specific question um, to Cooper Bowers, um, we can direct that question to the right area. I'm not, I, I don't know if they meant red light cameras or just a traffic camera, but um, if, if you can please send us that email to Cooper, uh, we, we, can, we can pass that on to the correct folks. Okay, David Carter, um, if you could please state your question or comment, we'd be happy to hear from you. Okay, am I unmuted, Pam? You are, I can. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for all of, all of you guys do. I did already send some written comments in on Old County Road, which I hope we can look at um, and see what options are there, um, including some of the work we're trying to do at the county level. I'm a, a, full disclosure, I'm a county councilman as well, to see if maybe some trails can be put offside through some open space that we're trying to connect behind. Um, you know, some of the housing developments and totally off-road. Um, I also sent some comments in on the need for a transportation improvement district study for what we're calling the West Wing area. Um, I have some real issues over there. I know that secretaries agreed to do that. 
Um, but we have to figure out how to do it. And, and part of it may require um, revisiting of the ordinance was passed in 2019 where Del Dot worked with the county because this area is only residential. So our ordinance for TIDs in the county doesn't include that. Um, it's not- well, Dave, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, but I do just want to c clarify, the secretary didn't okay it. She, she no. just wanted us to take on- She board. agreed to study it and see whether yes. that's yes. I, yes. I agree, and, and I appreciate that. Um, sure. I hope that um, as part of that, we will begin to start looking at locational efficiency of roads and also things like affordable housing. Well, MAPCO did a little of that. I would love to see that included almost as like one of your criterias, even if we have to update the state law, because I think it's really important, particularly the area south of the canal, because I don't think people really realize these spatial distances, patterns we already have. And it's really unfair, I think, to Del Dot and Dart to, to be building in the way we're gonna build, putting some, you know, Broke zones out in the middle of nowhere and then trying to figure out how we can service them in a meaningful, meaningful way. And some of the new studies on the locational efficiency that looks not just at housing costs, but also as in transportation costs and access to other services is really important. For all your projects, I urge you to, to the extent you can look at that locational efficiency as part of the criteria wherever you can. Um, and to make sure that you, you're giving that to your planners who go to plus meetings to tell us in the local level, well, this is kind of crazy because, you know, you're building this, but we're never going to have locational efficiency. Does this really make sense here? And, and give us that guidance because you pay for it. A couple of other quick projects. I would love to see Lorewood Grove continue um, the study that's on the books further out past Whitehall. As you know, we have several development plans coming. Um, I'm excited to hear that you're trying to look at it on the one end, um, really from 13 up to the circle there at Whitehall, but it's coming. It'd be nice if we could kind of continue that study and get it all the way through. Now we can expect some people to drop down to, towards Bayberry, but some are gonna try and go through. And then we're really suffering down in the area of the district around Town's End. Um, we have a big problem at 71 and Pine Tree Corner Road. I don't know whether um, there can be some consideration of a project there. And also that there's a little bridge, I don't know if it's a bridge or a culvert, what it is, but it's got um, walls on each side on Wiggins Mill Road that's a real problem. And, and what we're seeing is that Chiney Road with real problems coming through um, Town's End has become a major informal bypass from Middletown for people going south to Dover, particularly during rush hour. And, um, you know, they have some development there, but it's really being impacted by other areas. And I would love um, to ha really take a good hard look at, at whether we could fix anything at that intersection of 71 and Pine Tree Corner. And also if anything can be done on Wiggins Mill Road with that. I don't know, if, I honestly don't know if it was a bridge or a concrete culvert. It's up closer to the railroad track ends, but it's a real problem. And, and I don't know whether we can get anything just for a study in the tip to see whether that can bridge can be widened. And But it, it, that road is getting to be a real problem. Okay, sure. and, and thank you so much for all you do. And uh, I, I sent comments on the other so I'm not gonna spend too much time on those. Great, okay. Well, thank you so much for your comments. All righty. Well, I, I don't see any more um, questions in the question and answer or raised hands. Um, so I will just hold to see if there's anybody else that has any questions or concerns, comments. Okay, so there is a question in the question and answer from Steve Griffith, Griffith. As a 27 year resident of Atoms Run, I have dealt with the substandard conditions on Old County Road on a daily basis. 
the lack of movement on the old county road corridor study published by Beldat in January of 2005 is incredibly fr fr frustrating. How did we get Old County, how do we get Old County Road on the radar for Wilmatco, Del Dot, the TIP and or, and or the RTP? So I believe that Heather had answered that um, previously in the, and, and we are aware um, for sure, just based on the workshop or, or the meeting that, that we had with all of the residents. Um, and we thank you so much for your comment and that will be recorded as part of the official record. Pam, since uh, we don't have other questions, I can elaborate on that a little bit more as well. So the, uh, you know, again, Heather explained and, you know, I don't know that I don't, I, I certainly wasn't involved in 2005, so I don't know, I, I don't know that we could find a good reason as to why, but as you see, this is a very public process. And so for whatever reason, between 2005 and the last time Wilmapco did their regional transportation plan, for whatever reason, this did not pop up as a hot project. And so it was not included in the previous regional transportation plan. So it is clearly uh, hot now. And as Heather said, we'll coordinate with Wilmapco on their next RTP. Uh, mm -hmm. But as I, Steve, I think you were in the public meeting. I know Ann was, uh, you know, even if we get it in the RTP and a future tip, uh, that's still we're years away. So uh, to, I think some of this is a re reiteration of our previous meeting, but uh, uh, if, for those who aren't familiar with it, so uh, on the east end of the project, at the intersection with Glasgow Avenue. That is part of a project that we are starting design on this fiscal year. Uh, we'll be starting design up in the near future uh, of the Glasgow Avenue project, which will have uh, a, a roundabout is proposed at that intersection of uh, Old County Road and Glasgow Avenue, uh, which I'm extremely familiar with it because it is on my drive from my house to Canal Little League where I spend uh, a good amount of my waking hours that are not at Del Dot. Um, so I'm very familiar with the road and the intersection. Uh, so that project will be kicking off in design uh, shortly. And then again, we have to get through the design and the right of way process and then we'll get to construction. On the rest of the road, uh, we've committed to reanalyzing all the crash data or updating our crash analysis really to uh, all the latest, um, pulling up all the latest data and looking if there is any um, short term, any more. So again, in, in our last, our public meeting on that, we talked about, we did signing upgrades, speed, looked at speed limits, truck restrictions, the all way stop at uh, Fraser Road. Uh, we were looking at trimming back some trees, et cetera. So there was a lot of little things we were doing to try to address the concerns outside of a major capital project. And so we've committed to reanalyzing all that and seeing if there's anything else we can do in the short term uh, to help that corridor. Again, it's not gonna be shoulders and realigning curves. It's gonna be smaller things, but there may be other smaller things we can do in the short term that can help the safety and operations on that corridor. So we hope to get back with um, the community later this fall on, on that uh, effort. Thank you so much, Mark. All righty. Don't see any questions in the chat nor hands raised. So anybody has any other questions or comments, we'd be happy to keep them, please. If not, though, I don't want you to feel we, we this is the presentation and you, and you all have heard, 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 heard it. So just a reminder again, there's many, many ways to submit comments if you don't want to do it via this 
presentation. We have uh, we have email. We can do it on the survey link for the new projects. Um, we you can do it by phone by printing out the survey and either mailing it in or faxing it, it in or emailing it. So there are many, many ways to provide public comment. So and the, and the great thing is, is that even if you may not have a question now, you have until November 15th to provide that comment. Welcome anyone to, uh, to attend the Kent and the Sussex ones if you are interested. So if, if anybody wants to hop off or, or anything, we, we thank you so much for your attendance and we wish you a great night. I think there is one question we have. So one of the questions is from Bill Dunn is what is the timeline on the old Capitol Trail project? So either Mark or somebody from his group, we can, um, we can answer that question if, if one of you wants to answer it live. I can, I don't have it at my fingertips. I can look it up unless, uh, I don't remember if that's Jerry or Brianna, if either of you. It's uh, Brianna's project. So if Brianna has that one. Yeah. All right, guys, I am looking that up right now. Okay. Um, let me turn my, my video back on. So we are um, just getting started with this project and going through some of the preliminary design efforts. Um, and actually, we are gearing up to have a virtual public workshop for that project specifically um, this fall. Um, so, Right now, I believe we don't have, we're going to be going through the design phase. Like I said, we're just getting started um, and then we'll still have to go through the right of way phase. I believe construction is currently slated um, for 2025 at the moment. Um, but again, we're very early on in our process. So we, we do have to, to go through our um, design and right of way phase, which could have that slated one way or another. Um, but stay tuned because there, uh, to the dealt out project website, because like I said, there will be a um, public workshop this fall coming up pretty soon. Great, thank you so much, Brianna. I think Bill, Bill had made a comment on that it was approved in 2014. I'm not exactly sure what that, what, Bill, if you, if you want to, um, it, it, I don't know if you meant that it was put into the CTP in 2014 or, or not, but generally, just to let you know, normally all of the new projects, when they get put into the CTP, since, since our CTP does have to be fiscally constrained, generally all of the new projects do get put into um, the the out, outdoor years of the CTP. So, if if something was approved in twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, yep. it is not unheard of for for it to to start the the planning and the design portions six-ish years after it, it was put into the CTP. The project was approved in fiscal 2014. Uh, the study was done by Will Mapco and Del Dot, and they both signed off on it. Uh, and in its original proposal, or the first time I saw it in the tip was 
uh, design study work was supposed to start in either 15 or 16, and it was to be completed by 18. And year after year, time after time, it got pushed further and further back. So the question is, is it going to move forward this time? And when can we expect it completed? Well, just to let you know, if since I used to be in Rihanna's section, um, I do know that we have done the survey. Um, we have talked with the residents, all of the preliminary data gathering and such is being conducted now. So that project is moving forward. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have about a half hour left in our meeting. So if anybody else has any questions or comments, we welcome them. If not, you are welcome to leave the presentation. Again, thank you so much for attending. We'll just be hanging out here for another half hour. If anybody has anything that they can think of. Related to transportation <laughs> in Delaware. I think we have another question from Ashton. Hello. All right, so the question is, I haven't looked up the plans yet for the 295 to 95 on the Dell dot website yet, but if that two lanes merging, but is that, I assume that's what I meant, is that two lanes merging into one on 95 going to be permanent? So Mark, I assume that that um, that question is geared to the 295. I, th I think that. that's for the I think that's for the active project that's in construction right now. Oh, OK. The, I think that, yeah, the 295 to 95. So I don't have that. Uh, uh, I'm not positive exactly. So eventually we need to get down to the number of lanes that are on 95 because we're not widening 95 going into the marsh area so uh jerry i don't know if you if you have uh what that exact lane configuration is from 295 on the 95 that we're upgrading as part of the 141 project hi this is jerry no i i don't have that really on hand right now so you know would have to get back to answer that question I just wanted to make sure, Ashton, was that the question or was that the, the question that you actually had? <laughs> and um, we can keep doing it in, in the question and answer, or if you would like to um, unmute yourself, we could, we could try to get exactly what answer you need to. Let's see here. 
Yep. Well, I, Ashton, I know during construction, they've, they've made some modification. Yes, so it's in a construction configuration right now. It's not in its final configuration. Uh, it is, they made some adjustments Tuesday, at, which improved things. And uh, again, we'll, we'll look up, the, the final configuration is gonna be in, better than what's out there right now. And we'll, we'll look up exactly what that final configuration is gonna be. Thank you. He said, okay, cool, thank you. He or she, I'm not, I'm not sure if Ashton knew, yeah. But thank you, appreciate the question. We will keep monitoring the question and answer and the raising of the hand if anybody has anything else. Looks like a lot of our attendees have dropped off. But if anybody has anything else, we, we, we do have 24 more minutes left. Pam, I don't, I was just looking things up while we were waiting. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think Bill Dunn is still on, um, but I can't, I don't see any delay in the old Capitol Trail project. The first I find it in the CTP is in FY 18 to 23, and design was scheduled to start in 21. So I don't know if he's thinking of a different project, but it looks to me like Again, the study might have been in. I don't. I the study being done in fourteen sounds right. Looks like it was in the first CTP in eighteen. And again, we've started design in twenty one. Yes, I did. I did get that information from Lincoln. Yeah, just figured that. Uh, that yeah. That he um. He was happy we were starting to work on it. So that's good. <laughs> I do have a question from Steve. Um, it says, you mentioned a survey on the public comment slide you have up on the screen. The link you have provided, which is the ArcGIS, does not seem to include this survey. It does say on the page you can enter comments, but I'm not even sure how to do that on there. Anyway, just not sure what you meant by use the survey. So yes, very good question. Um, so let's see here. So the, the ArcGIS, Megan, if you don't mind clicking on that again or opening that, that link. So that survey is only for the new projects. Um, that is, well, it's, it's specifically geared to the new pro projects, but um, yes, if you can just click, yep, thank you. But you, so, yep, thanks. Click on the pink, and then it says click here to submit a comment. And then you can put any name that you, you hike on there um, for the project name from what I uh, from what I can understand you can just delete that and put any type of comment you want for any project so that is um that all of those will get populated into our system so that's just a one of many ways. So I'm not 
I'm not sure if um, if Steve, if you're having, if I, I hopefully that direction helps with the comment form. Thank you, New Hagen. Yes, thank you. That helps. Yay. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, when uh, when Chris had sh showed us that that thing that he that question that he had developed, it was um is a very cool thing. Very psyched about that. So. We will keep monitoring the question and answer and the raise hand um, for 20 more minutes. So if anybody has anything else, or if you want to hear me stop talking, I will be quiet. <laughs> if anybody has anything else, please share. Well, I am going to call a two minute warning and wrap this up. <laughs> So I just want to thank everybody who is still on. Uh, thank you attendees um, for all of the great questions and the comments and for us having the opportunity to present on the draft FY23 to 28 CTP. Also want to thank all of the panelists, uh, not only the everyone that presented, but all of the people who answered questions and worked behind the scenes. Thank you very much for all of your help. And I think we're going to close this out and call it a wrap. So thank you again and hope everybody has a great evening. Bye-bye.